You never discipline a, a tantrum. A tantrum is a loss of emotional control at not getting what they want, when they want, and how they want it. You don't discipline that. It's a lot. It's a loss of emotional control. You, my three-year-old gets so angry and yells. I don't know how to handle it. Um, well, that's in the attitude department. You really don't do much about that. Um, you set yourself up as a leader, and their attitude will change organically in a reaction to your leadership. So that's what leadership's all about. You lead, they will follow. Children instinctively need a leader. They need, crave, and want a leader. They don't know how to ask for it. But if you're not a leader for your children, you're going to send them out there in the world. They're going to be very vulnerable. They're going to be very vulnerable to peer pressure, bullying, the drug dealer on the corner, the internet, the Kardashians. They're going to go searching for a leader elsewhere because they instinctively need, crave, and want one. That's why you want to be their leader. And they're going to take that leadership umbrella everywhere they go. So once you've got your leadership cemented, by the age of about three and a half, to four, they're going to be formed under your leadership umbrella. So wherever they go, they're going to be respectful and polite, no matter where they go. When you're a leader, it calms them down, and that would not happen. Work on your leadership. Their behavior is 100% a direct result of your parenting. Everyone wants to fix kids. We don't do that. We fix and teach parents because they are reacting to you. That is what that is. They are reacting to you. I've worked with hundreds of kids, violent teenagers, delinquent teenagers, uh, kids, every kid I worked with was difficult. No one ever said, here's an easy one, Lisa. They all said, good luck with this one. So of all ages, toddlers right up to teenagers. And I managed to get respect with all of them. Was it them or was it me? Did I just catch all those hundreds of kids on a good day or was it my leadership? Work on your leadership and you will get great results with kids. It's just the way it is. I don't teach kidding. I don't teach teenagering. I don't teach toddlering. I teach parenting. You, that's what I call leadership. And by the way, when I'm talking about young children, you, it's completely different with teenagers. Teenagers are a whole other can of worms. They're my favorite age, actually. Um, but yeah, it's different. When my three-year-old has a tantrum and I pick him up to remove him, a situation he kicks out of my room. Okay, pick him up to remove him, a situation. Why are you picking him up to remove him? I don't let them uh, have a fit where they are. If you do have to move them and they kick, I would turn them around so that they're not facing you and you do have to carry them somewhere. So just kind of carry them like this or whatever. Don't pick them up like this so they can kick easier. Um, but yeah, it's just something you're going to have to go through. If you absolutely have to remove them from a situation, do so, but then plunk them down nearby and then ignore them. Um, you might have to physically restrain them if they try and run back to wherever you want them to not be. Uh, but yeah, I have a whole course on toddler tantrums if you're interested, but that's a three-year-old. Um, it's the same thing with tantrums, though. Um, you still ignore tantrums. They don't go on the behavior board. You never discipline a, a tantrum. A tantrum is a loss of emotional control at not getting what they want, when they want, and how they want it. You don't discipline that. It's a, lo it's a loss of emotional control. You are minimizing the duration, intensity, and frequency by ignoring the tantrum. You ignore the crazy, and then you reward the calm. Like with my son, he had tantrums. My daughter didn't. They're born to have them, or they are can't stand it when people go on the comments and they say, oh, well, my, I have four kids and they've never had a tantrum as if it's the mom. They're born to do it. It's nothing you did or didn't do. OK, they are either going to have tantrums or they're never going to have one. I never had one. My daughter never had one. My daughter, my son was very good at them. They're either going to have them or they're not. It's nothing you did, but you can minimize them in duration, frequency and intensity by ignoring them. So with my son, I ignore the crazy, which is the tantrum. I'm filing my nails, waiting and right there, just waiting. Look like you're waiting for a bus. It's important that they know you're standing there waiting for that tantrum to stop. Don't look at them. Don't talk to them. As soon as they're done, you say, oh, y'all done? Okay, let's go read a book or let's go to the park or let's go. So it's like it never happened. Like it has no effect on you whatsoever because they're only doing it to affect you. If it doesn't affect you, they're going to stop doing it. What do you do when you try to discipline, implement a consequence and kids get silly? Anger seems easy to deal with, but the goofiness, I don't know how, four, oh, four years old. Okay, they usually do that as a way to manipulate you, to pull you into their silly world. Hey, this isn't so serious. Look at me. Ha ha, I'm laughing at you and all that stuff like that. Just check out the behavior board and just follow through with that. And uh, don't worry about their attitude. Attitude, once you become a leader, their attitude organically changes. So it they reflect your leadership. Between, check out the boot camp course too. That's from the age of 3 to 12 years old. At that age, that's when you're at the height of your leadership skills. The, they will want to please you when you're a good leader. They want to please you. Their behavior between the ages of 3 and 12 is 100% a direct result of your parenting. 
So isn't that good news? It means you can actually control it. You don't want to control their personality or their basic nature. That's different. You wouldn't want to squash that. But how they treat people how, and if they respect people, that you can control. Okay, so check out the boot camp course. It's all in the link above. My six-year-old will jump and bang in his room when he doesn't get his way. I ignore this. Should I continue to ignore it? I look at it as a tantrum, so that's why I've been ignoring it. Okay, you know what? I would check out the boot camp course. That's sort of next level. At six years old, they should be outgrowing that stuff. Check out the boot camp course, because when you're a leader, that just doesn't happen. Like You're asking me, how do I deal with that one specific thing? But if you're not a leader, it's not going to work anyway. So check out the boot camp course, or at the least, check out the behavior board. That's completely free. And um, the boot camp course, uh, course has a lot more in it, obviously, but it starts with the behavior boards. Um, but yeah, it just says to me that I can, I can tell you what I do, but I'm a leader. So, you, and it would work, but if you're not a leader and at six years old, if they're still acting like that, you want to work on your leadership. Remember, we're never fixing kids. We're teaching parents here. What are good consequences for nine-year-old and three-year-old? Check out the behavior board. Um, it'll explain how you do that. And it depends on your home. It's usually a good deed. Like the consequence, if they do something bad, they have to replace it with doing something good. It's usually like a chore. Boy, I, got, I get a lot of flack for this. We don't want to make chores negative. Chores, it's like you want to make chores fun. How much fun do you really think a teenager, like if you teach them that cleaning the toilet is fun, as a teenager, they're going to go, yippee, I get to clean the toilet. Most people never like chores. That's okay. You want to teach children that you're not going to like everything in life. Don't try and make everything fun. That's the pleaser parent style. You know, I hate that. So <laughs> don't try and make everything fun and easy for your kids. That's ridiculous. Life isn't always fun and easy. So yeah, uh, anyway, consequences are usually a chore. But check out the behavior board. There's some exceptions in there. It's, it's completely free. Mm. And if you want more, that's the boot camp course. That's the, the behavior board on steroids. Actually, uh, the behavior board, uh, we do that in the, in the boot camp course. It's five weeks long. The first three weeks are behavior boards. And then we go off the behavior board and go rogue, really. I never used a behavior board. It's just a teaching tool, teaching you how to get respect because you're on there too. So you've got to give respect to get it. That's what a leader does. A leader isn't a dictator or an authority style. You are a leader. You give respect to get it. You, you set an example. You're accountable too because kids aren't listening to you. They're watching you. Leadership parenting to me is not about discipline. That's a tiny part of it. It's about connecting and bonding with kids in their world making them feel good about themselves, making them like themselves. When you do that for a child or even a teenager, they will want to please you or a, a teenager just won't want to disappoint you. They're going to look up to you. They're going to feel good about themselves when they're with you. If you're the source of that high self-esteem and them liking themselves and being proud of themselves, they're going to want to please you. Just everything. Then you don't even have to discipline. Kids generally don't disrespect someone they look up to. It's very rare. Very rare. Think about it. You ever look up to someone? Don't you treat them really well? If you look up to someone, maybe a teacher or a coach, someone that you really admired, a grandparent, a parent, someone that you really look up to, would you disrespect them? Probably not, right? So my point with this is that's why I didn't have to discipline my kids. Because I got respect when they were tiny and sailed right through the teen years. Very rare did I ever have to correct anything. <laughs> Any tips for parenting in Canada? Huh? My family and I are moving there soon. Um, you know, you'll find, and every district is different too. My kids both went to different high schools, very close by, like very nearby, but they, they chose them. One was a smaller one, one was a bigger one. I would suggest though, if you're going to, uh, this is kind of a sidetrack, but if you're going to, with high school, I think a bigger school is better. They got a bigger pool of friends to pick from. It was harder. There's, there tends to be more uh, neat uh, cl clicks in smaller high schools because they usually all come from one middle school. My daughter came from a farther away school. So there was sort of a few more small, it was a smaller high school, more clicks. It was a little bit trickier to get in with that crowd. Whereas my son went to a giant high school that was a feeder school for a whole bunch of uh, middle schools. And there was a lot, it was a bigger pool to choose from. But anyway, every, and every district is different too. Like my daughter and son went to different high schools. They were at different times. They were uh, five years apart, but there were different, ways of dressing even. So yeah, it's very hard to generalize. You could probably go to a school um, in Australia that you'd find more similar to one in Canada than maybe another one in Canada, another one like or America or the States. They're, you know, they're all so different. Each district is, has a different feeling.
I used to go there a lot. And uh, this is a, an example of say what you mean and mean what you say. you got to follow through when you threaten with something. Anyway, this is how stupid I was. My son was, I think, three or four. And a friend and I were going down to Dream World with our kids. Now, we had separate cars because, you know, car seats. We couldn't fit, fit them all into one. So she had two, her two kids in her car and my son and I in the other. I think I was pregnant at the time. And my son and I in the other. So we get there. He had a miserable look on his face. You know, he just was in a mood, right? So I said to him, this is how stupid I was. I said to him, if you don't put a smile on your face, we're driving home right now. And my friend went, oh, no, because she knew if he didn't put a smile on his face, I was going home. And I instantly thought, how dumb am I? So anyway, he went like this and he put a real fake smile and then it turned into a real smile. But yeah, you got to be careful what you threaten because you got to be willing to go through with it. I think that's the only time I ever threatened where I regretted it. And I thought, boy, how dumb was that? Eh? Anyway, luckily he didn't. Luckily he put a, a smile on his face. You got to be careful. Think before you threaten. My six-year-old still throws tantrums. Any ideas? Okay, it just means you're not a leader uh, because they tend to calm down when they've got a leader as a parent. So that uh, tantrums usually stop at about three and a half, um, maybe four. Um, if you're a leader, that that will happen. Depends on their personality. Sometimes they're more feisty than others and all that. Uh, anyway, so yeah, work on your leadership skills and that doesn't tend to happen. How do you prevent a kid from being a follower? If you're a leader, they follow you and no one else. It's the way it is. You set yourself up as a leader. If you're not a leader, they're going to be very vulnerable out there in the world. They're going to be very vulnerable to peer pressure, bullying, the drug dealer on the corner, the internet, the Kardashians. They're going to follow anybody out there. When you're a really good leader, they follow you. Even throughout the teen years, they're going to come to you with the big stuff. They just do because you've been their leader all those years and you're now their leader. You know, they, they just follow you or they go to you for advice when they're older, like when they're teenagers.